Well, a prototype, again, is something that, that looks and sort of acts like the final version, but doesn't necessarily do everything that it's supposed to, and it could be faking some things. All right? So the key things for this prototype would be the, the look and feel of it. All right? What do I mean by look? I mean, you know, just, you know, what the surface of the page looks like, you know? Colors that you're using, fonts you're using, how you're laying out the work, and so on. What do I mean by feel? In this context, I would mean navigation, how I get from page to page to page. So we want to capture the look and feel of our site in the prototype. And we're not really concerned about the, the guts, uh, that is, the actual database interactivity. You can fake that if you want to. Think about what you're using a prototype for, all right? What do you use a prototype for? Why, why do we make a prototype? To show what the finished product is going to look like. Show what the finished product is going to look like. To show who what the finished product is going to look like. Well, right now, you, but... All right, all right, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, like, if I wanted to say, okay, I can build this website that's going to look like this and everything, so like to a prospective client, perhaps. Okay, so the person that you're doing a website for, all right, you can document all sorts of things, and you can describe the goals, and you can describe the database, and you can describe all these things, but that will largely go over someone's head. I mean, they'll, they'll see it, and if you ask them questions, you know, they'll be able to answer them and all that. But, as they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. If you can actually show them what it's going to look like and how it's going to behave, all right, then they're in a position to say, hey, I like this, I don't like it, or change this, or change that. You know, so for example, if I were going to say my page is going to have a light blue background and dark blue text, how does that look? It might look good. I don't know. Show me what you mean by light blue. Show me what you mean by dark blue. And then I'll look at it and say, yeah, that looks great. Or no, hmm, I don't want the blue on blue. Maybe put black font on, on that light blue. I like the light blue, but I don't like the, the blue of the font. So put black font on the light blue or whatever. It's just, you know, people have a hard time envisioning and imagining um, when given just a total blank slate. However, everyone in the world can look at something and complain about it, all right? And criticize it and say, no, that image is too big. No, that image is too small. I'd rather have the navigation going this way. I'd rather have the, and so on and so forth. So that's what you're trying to gain with the prototype, is a sense of what it's gonna look like, give a, a, a rough idea of the functionality, and again, the functionality doesn't have to be real for the prototype. All right? you, you, you can mock things up to show them what it will look like, and, that, and that's adequate. There's always a, a, a trade-off when you're doing a prototype, right? You don't do much on the prototype, then it's kind of useless, right? And the person looks at it, and they don't really get a sense of what the site's going to look like, so any feedback they give you, you know, who cares, right? The reverse is also true, though. If you do too much work on a prototype, guess what? You didn't make a prototype, you made the beta version or the alpha version of the actual site. In which case, if it's wrong, you gotta go and rework a bunch of stuff, all right? ERDs is another thing that you would go through uh, and, and review. Now, not everyone developing, uh, that, that you'd work with uh, developing a website is gonna be an expert on databases, but you should be able to explain to the clients like what an ERD is and what it shows, and they should be able to criticize and say, no, student can have more than one major, you know, or whatever the particular problem is. So you kind of have to find that sweet spot. Uh, but the idea is, is that a prototype is giving people something sort of real to look at, to put in their hands that they can play with and they can offer good feedback on. Prototype is also effective, as well as any of this documentation, in communicating within your own team of what it's going to look like. All right? That is, again, you know, you may be the only person working on the website, or 
you may be working on a, with a part of a team. Whereas maybe one person is responsible for the graphics, another person is responsible for this, and so on. A prototype is a good way to sort of make sure everyone's on the same page. All right? It's something tangible. It's not just words. It's something that they can look at and play. So, you know, consider that in creating it. By all means, if you do have questions about, like, how detailed do I need to be? Um, is this adequate for a prototype or whatever? By all means, feel free to ask. If you have questions about the scope of your assignment, in other words, is this too big, is this too small? I have an idea, but I can't think of how to really, you know, make it beyond one table, you know, or whatever. Then talk about it. Uh, part of the reason for turning in the design in advance is it does give me an opportunity, if you haven't talked to me about that, to offer you feedback about like what you could do to, to, to make it better. Other questions? The four other pages that you want and on, mm -hmm. are the, is that the, 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 the premise that we'll be querying different values uh, on each page? For example, if you have a business, one will be searching employees, another one searching products. Is that the, the fundamental difference you want between those four? Four pages will be interacting somehow with the database. You could be querying the database. That's one way to interact with the database. You could be showing header in detail, whereas the example I showed over there, you show a student schedule. All right. You could be doing inserts, updates, and deletes to a table. So. These are probably the, the ways that you're going to be interacting with the database. You're going to either be doing a query uh, and displaying data, or you're going to be able to maintain data. So as long as you cover all these things amongst your four pages, you're okay. In other words, these four pages, when all is said and done, have to cover these three points. And another question? Yeah, I was wondering if we turned it in and we completely found a section, would you let us redo it? I typically do. Uh, it, it does get to be. Um, it, close to the end. it does get to be close to the end, and and you know you're going to be swamped and I'm going to be swamped. Um, but yeah, I, I typically give folks the opportunity uh, to, to to do it again. Um, and I do encourage you to look at what, you know, to, to bring it to me to, to, to get feedback before you turn it in. And also to, to, to work together on this. And we may have some activities where we, we take a look at where we're at with the design and, and you can exchange ideas and see where you're going. Let me tell you the, oh, let, let's finish this up and then we'll go back and have some final comments should look professional, all right? Employ good coding practices, be accessible, cross-browser compatible. One thing I don't have listed here, by the way, that you could do, and that would count, is if you, uh, if you had like a custom object like we did with tuition. That would be another thing that you could do, all right? But at any rate, it should look like a completed website. You know, it, it should look, you know, this isn't a graphics design class, so it's not like, you know, I'm going to, to uh, hold it to some impossibly high standards for the appearance. But it should look like it's complete and not just, you know, stuff that was dragged and dropped on, onto a page. So it should be user-friendly, fully functional, and fulfill the stated purpose. Again, the site doesn't need to be extensive, but whatever it does, it should do it completely. That's the key word here. Getting back to the Twilight example, there are certain things that the application didn't do. Um, I'm trying to remember, uh, and, and I might not remember exactly, but I'll, I'll make up what I remember, all right? And, and I'll tell you why that's okay. You weren't able to, through the website, add a new question in. All right? That had to be done like behind the scenes. All right? 
But that's okay, because the person met these characteristics, all right, and the part of it that it did do, that is the voting and this and that and the other, it did correctly and completely. So it's better to take one small aspect of a problem and address it completely than try to offer a comprehensive solution to everything that could be related to the issue that you're covering and really only scratch the surface in a bunch of areas. All right? As long as, of course, you hit these criteria. Let me talk about the trouble spots regarding design. All right? Number one, the trouble spot of this is not being specific enough. not being specific enough. Especially when related to the goals of the site. Those of you that had me for 216 will know that when I say something like designing a user-friendly site, that isn't a goal. Right? You might say, well, of course it's a goal. Every site. Yeah, every site should have that. So it doesn't really count as a goal for your site specifically. When we define, when I want you to define these goals, I want you to think specifically for your site, for your content. Why are people visiting your page? Another one that we get, that the well, one I get all the time, is that it should have a, a, a good, good, clear navigation. All right? What I ask people when they put that down is, are people visiting your site to see how wonderful your navigation is? <laughs> right? If the answer to that question is yes, then that's a goal. But you know what? They're probably not. They're visiting your site to find out what they can cook for dinner today or plan a meal that involves people that have allergies or dietary restrictions or whatever. That's why they're visiting your site. They're not visiting it to appreciate your design skills. Your design skills are there to help them to support achieving their goals, but the design that you do is not the goal itself. So being vague about your goals and sort of being very vague in this as well. You know, it says a few paragraphs, you know, a few reasonably sized paragraphs. That would be, you know, three or four What's a reasonable size paragraph? You know, four or five sentences. Yeah, it's not like you can have a site about recipes. It's going to have a lot of recipes on them. You can pick the recipes you like. You know, that's not. You know, and again, I, you know, I don't mean to uh, to, to criticize uh, people done before, but keep in mind the weight of this assignment. You know, twenty points, and this is three of those twenty points. So this is three points towards your final grade. This is the, the same weight on this part of this assignment as was your first lab assignment. So spend some time thinking about it and writing it out. An entity relationship diagram. This is where a lot of the work and a lot of the revisions is going to be in. If anything, this is where I would say talk to me in advance and, and review it. All right. This is so important in any project to get the design right. Listing of all pages will be included. It's sort of like this. All right. In the sense that where people usually go wrong is they're just very vague and they don't really describe in detail what they're doing or whatever. Finally, the prototype. What's wrong with people's prototype is they don't hit that sweet spot. The sweet spot being do enough work to show me what it's going to look like, the basic look and feel of the site, um, but don't do so much where you're actually developing the site at this point. So be somewhere in the middle. 
You, know, you don't want to do too much on a prototype because what if the what if the client rips it to shreds and says this is horrible, get it out of here. I'm offended you even show me this, right? I mean, that's obviously sort of the worst case situation. But um, if they were to say that, then then if you've done a lot of work to do that, um, then then you're out a lot of work. All right. In one respect. And I've been on a lot of projects. You have to develop a thick skin. All right? You have to not be afraid to put something out there in front of people. All right? But you can't take offense if they rip it apart. All right? Because if you describe someone in words what you plan on doing, they're going like, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. When they actually see it, that's when their opinion really forms. And that's when they really know what's good or bad about it. And sometimes you present a prototype just to be ripped apart. All right? Um, if, if a client is vague on what their goals are, or they're vague about what they really want, all right? Then often what you do is you roll the dice, you come up with something, let them rip it apart, then you might think, gee, you know, I, I got beat up there, I, you know, I lost that one. I, you, no, you didn't. You won because you got the answers you really need, and then you can go and do that. All right? Uh, classic thing in the, in the Steve Jobs books I, I, I uh, just finished reading, he talked about like doing prototypes for things, and he'd tell people it's crazy. The designer asked him what, what he wanted, and he would say, I'll know when I see it. All right? And you might say that's a problem. Well, it's only a problem if you put your ego in the way. And you have a hard time someone ripping apart your design. All right? Um, if you approach it with the attitude of, I'm using my prototype as a tool to get to the right answer, then you're not so sensitive when someone rips it apart. All right, because it's like, okay, it was, it was like they say, the, the proverbial straw man. You put it out there to be ripped apart, and okay, now you can move on to a, a better solution. What's the problem with, the typical problem with the completed? It just don't work, <laughs> all right? Or it doesn't really look professional. It looks like it was, you know, half-baked, not a complete site. Or it doesn't really solve the purpose that it, that it said it was going to. All right. So this one is pretty straightforward. This one, I'd be most students pretty much have an idea of, of you know how well they've done on this part. This part is a little vague, you know. And I know you know students do like you know, and everyone likes when things are really concrete and laid out. Do this, do this, do this, and do this. But the design aspect especially isn't like that, right? It's much more, you know, I can describe what would constitute a good design and what I want you to put into it. But again, there's a lot of room for variance as well, right? And a lot of, lot of ambiguity, and we have to sort of work through that process. Questions? All right, we have 20 minutes left. I don't think it's enough time to start talking about databases, so we'll talk about those on whatever our next class meeting is. Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. All right. Take advantage of this time to practice the UI stuff that we talked about and to get some good feedback so that you can go in and create master pages and, and, and so on. All right, we'll see you in lab. I will now leave the screen blank for... <laughs> I'll come back at 1 and turn off the recording. <laughs>